If you do not dig nitrogen into the soil and only spread fertilizer or slurry on its surface, almost 80% of this element will escape into the air. The plants will be fertilized, but only in small amounts and they will use it up quickly, so if you are trying to save the yellowed leaves of your plant, be sure to bury it in the ground. Otherwise you will quickly notice the deficiency returning. Nitrogen, in contact with water and air, quickly undergoes transformations that lead to its escape into the atmosphere or leaching into deep layers of the ground. Therefore, heavy rains, especially on sandy soils, will quickly wash it away from under the soil roots. Limiting nitrogen escape is possible thanks to nitrification reactions, which are carried out under natural conditions by soil bacteria, and the use of urease, which is responsible for the decomposition of stable nitrogen compounds. Leaching in soils, sandy soils, rainfall of 10 lm2 can move nitrogen in the nitrate form by as much as 12 cm into the soil profile. Heavy soils lose nitrogen in the form of nitrate from 7 to 23 kg per year. Nitrogen volatilization. This is a loss of 10% of nitrate nitrogen within 3 days of fertilization in water-saturated soil and a further 10% loss on each subsequent day when the soil is still saturated with water. Wet soil at least 20% is lost within 4 days. More than 60% of soils in Poland are light, sandy, exposed to nitrogen leaching. The greatest losses of nitrates occur from May to July. In Poland, the biggest problem is the leaching of the nitrate form due to the prevailing sandy soils. Nitrogen deficiency is manifested by yellowing of the plant's leaves and even the stems, they turn purple, the lower leaves dry up, the plant's growth is inhibited, and the fruits are small. Plants bloom poorly. Excess nitrogen means dark green leaves, excessive growth of green matter and poor flower growth, which means poor yield for fruiting vegetables. The leaves are overgrown and brittle, making them more easily attacked by fungi and insects. However, there is a way to retain nitrogen in the soil to benefit your crops. The basic tool for limiting the escape of nitrogen from the soil is balanced fertilization with doses appropriate for a given plant so that it can use it but not over-fertilize it. It has been proven that the leaching of nitrogen from the soil increases significantly when the nitrogen dose required to obtain optimal yields is exceeded. Maintaining the optimal level of organic matter content in the soil affects the ability of the soil to bind fertilizer nitrogen. A similar function is fulfilled by fertilization with natural fertilizers, such as manure, which release nutrients slowly. Nitrogen is an element that easily escapes from the ground, so the retention of this element in the soil is facilitated by rapid mixing of the fertilizer with the soil, which enables its slow decomposition and limits its volatilization and washing out. The first step to reducing nitrogen losses from the soil is to analyze the soil. It allows you to learn about the pH and content of the soil in macro and micro elements. Too low a pH, as well as deficiencies or excesses of some elements may hinder or prevent nitrogen binding, which will lead to its rapid escape from the soil. Proper fertilization should be based on soil resources, but also take into account the needs of plants. Nitrogen fertilizers contain various forms of nitrogen, but nitrates are absorbable by plants. In turn, the ammonium or amide form must undergo changes under the influence of soil microorganisms. Nitrification must occur, so appropriate microorganisms must also be introduced. Some bacteria produce urease, an enzyme that breaks down urea into ammonia, so it is also recommended to use inhibitors that slow down this process. This reaction is carried out by soil microorganisms, bacteria called nitrifiers. This process takes place in a neutral or slightly alkaline environment, so in acidic soils the population of nitrifying bacteria is low. Due to the need for oxygen, excess humus and heavy soils do not favor nitrification. The efficiency of the process is also influenced by the availability of substrates, although excess volatile ammonia is toxic to bacteria. Nitrosobacteria of the genera Nitrosomonas and Nitrosospira oxidize ammonium ions to nitrite with the participation of oxygen. In the next stage, nitrite ions are oxidized to nitrates by nitrobacteria of the Nitrobacter and Nitrococcus genera. Nitrogen is converted from nitrates and nitrites, 
which are forms of nitrogen easily absorbed by plants and constitute their main source of nitrogen. In addition, the nitrification reaction can only occur in aerobic conditions and at the appropriate pH, because low pH inhibits both phases of nitrification. Plants are unable to bind molecular nitrogen contained in the air. In turn, ammonium nitrogen has a toxic effect on crops, especially young seedlings, in extreme cases leading to their death. Chemoautotrophic nitrifying bacteria break down harmful ammonia, turning it into a valuable source of nutrients. It is also worth mentioning an enzyme belonging to the hydrolase class, i.e. urease. It catalyzes decomposition reactions occurring in an aqueous environment. This substance is produced by microorganisms that naturally inhabit the soil and are responsible for the decomposition of organic matter. Urea contains nitrogen in a form that is unavailable to plants, so it must be broken down in the soil under the influence of water. This reaction is catalyzed by ureases produced by soil bacteria and even some plants. However, these transformations occur much faster than nitrification and lead to the formation of large amounts of ammonia, which in excess has a toxic effect on plants. Urease inhibitors are used to prevent rapid degradation of urea and nitrogen escape. One of the most popular nitrogen fertilizers is urea. From 2021, only urea with an inhibitor is allowed for soil use. The addition of urease inhibitors to fertilizers reduces the degradation, leaching and escape of this element, while increasing the amount of nitrogen available to plants and prolongs the effect of fertilizers. Thanks to this, a larger amount of nitrogen penetrates into deeper layers of the soil, from where it can be absorbed by plant roots. In nature, nitrogen occurs mainly in organic compounds constituting the soil organic matter, therefore most of this element is found in the top layer of soil, i.e. in the level of humus accumulation and in soils with a higher humus content. Despite the small share of mineral nitrogen in the total content of this element in the soil, this form plays the greatest importance in plant nutrition. In the case of forests, nitrogen losses due to denitrification are low. The greatest nitrogen losses in the form of nitrogen oxides and molecular nitrogen occur at soil moisture levels above 50%. First of all, avoid using ammonium fertilizers, composts, and manure on warm or hot days, especially if the soil is alkaline. When using manure, an effective way to reduce losses is to plow it in as soon as possible after throwing it onto the ground. In addition to the methods discussed, ammonia losses from natural fertilizers during their application can be limited by selecting the appropriate application date. Ammonia emission is highest on hot, dry and windy days, therefore the use of fertilizers in cool, windless and humid periods helps to reduce it. Diluting slurry, diluted slurry infiltrates into the soil more easily than natural slurry. Mechanical fractionation of slurry, the use of a separated fraction of liquid slurry contributes to the reduction of ammonia emissions during application, due to its easier penetration into the soil. Urea should not be spread shortly after liming and after applying slurry and manure, as well as on plant residues remaining in the field after cultivation. In very moist soil, microorganisms cannot obtain enough oxygen. So the microbes inhale nitrates instead of oxygen and exhale nitrogen instead of carbon dioxide. Any type of nitrogen fertilizer can be used when the soil is dry or slightly moist and the forecast for the next few days does not indicate rain. Plants take nitrogen from the soil, and when the plant is harvested and removed from the soil, the nitrogen is removed with it. Therefore, after harvesting, it is worth digging in such soil, e.g. with straw or compost, or mulching it. It is assumed that the cultivation of legumes increases the nitrogen content of the soil.